。私の子供の学校は、子供があまり多くないので、スペースがありますが、近所の小学校は、子供がとても多いんです。Okay, so this is saying that、uh, my children, my children's school, that's the topic. And it's saying about my children's school, well, children,、uh, okunai, so not many. And amari is like a, it's the opposite of very, it's like a de intensifier. So it's like sort of not many at my children, you know, there are sort of not many children at my children's school. And node makes this an explanatory statement, it explains the thing that follows, which is that.、Uh, Space exists. So there's not many children in my school, so space exists. And then here, confusingly, ga in this case is not the subject marker. In this case, it's up here, it's a subject marker. But here, this is the other primary use of ga, which has a sense of like but. It's, it's one of many ways to express the idea of however or but in Japanese. And as a rule, though, this, this use of ga always follows a polite form of the verb or the polite copula. So here, arimas, like polite form of aru, and then followed by ga. So actually, that's important because it's, it's how you can tell those two uses of ga apart. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to distinguish them. So there, there's, you know, it's confusing, sure, that the same word has totally different meanings in these two different contexts, but at least there's a strong clue that distinguishes between the two the fact that this immediately follows a, a polite form of a verb. Okay, so the thing which is that, however, is this whole other separate independent clause, which is that.、Uh, Uh, neighborhood elementary school as a topic, children uh, vary uh, are many. So, again, my child's school doesn't have many children and therefore there's a lot of free space, but the neighborhood school, the neighborhood elementary school, has a lot of children. And one last grammatical point here、um, what we have is instead of just saying oi des, which would be Very many, right? Children are very many. It's oin des. And what this is, is this, this in is a shorthand for the nominalizing no. So without the n, I would say that again, the little translation would be children are very many. But with it, now the little translation is more like it is the case that children are very many. It's like this odd, you know, what in English is a very verbose roundabout turn of phrase to express the same idea. In Japanese, they use this very commonly because, well, as you can see, it's not verbose to express it. Exactly why they would use this in some cases and not others is, is a complex topic. It, one explanation given is that it has a sense of, of stating more like a, a fact, more, more of like, makes it more like a, of a declaration of fact than just something you casually say. Anyway, there, there, are, there are various explanations for why this nominalization is done, why it's snuck in. This is just the first example we'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it in, in future cases. その小学校では、運動会の日は、朝の4時から、両親が学校の前に並んでいるそうです。So、first off, we have that elementary school, the one that was just mentioned, the one that、uh, has a lot of kids. The sports event day, the sport meet day, that is also a topic of this sentence. And then in、uh, morning four o'clock, from morning four o'clock,、uh, parents, they're the subject. School, before school, well, front of school, actually, I should say, yeah, for physical locations, m a e has a sense of like in front of, in front of school.、Um, this verb here,、uh, narabu, narandeiru, means to, to, to line up. And then tacking on so this is like, well, seems to be the case. So it seems to be the case that parents, In front of the school, line up before four in the morning、uh, for the sport event day、uh, at that elementary school, the one that had a lot of kids in the prior sentence. A few things here to note. So, one is that, you know, if we consider dewa to be a combination of de and wa, then it's like, well, this is both the location where something is taking place, but also the topic of the sentence. And yet, we also have another topic here. Generally, you would think of there being as one topic to a sentence, but I've seen cases where it seems like you get away with having more than one. Maybe there's an alternate explanation for what's going on here, but that seems to be the case to me. And lastly, the, the verb here, the choice of using the teiru form, I think basically is justified for the same reasons I described before. And then also, it's interesting that this is the non past form of the verb rather than the past.、Uh, again, I think because this is describing recurring action, habitual action, something that happens 
every time they hold the sports festival day, not just at one, one specific point in the past. Okay, so this is saying gate, open, past tense form conditional. Um, I would translate it as upon opening or upon opened. And then immediately, uh, school to school, enter potential. So can enter. Yoni, we'll talk about this in a minute. And nanjikan. Um, so this is like some number of hours. Some number of hours marked as a topic with mo. Uh, a little strange. And then um, from before, so from before several hours, um, school outside, so outside the school, that is the location where um, we're l lining up. And again, it's another case of using n, which again, doesn't really change the literal meaning. So what this is saying is that <clears throat> for several hours before people are lining up outside the school in order to uh, enter the school one, immediately once the uh, gates open. The other notable thing in this clause is that the time expression several hours before, from several hours before, is is written as two separate noun phrases marked by separate particles. I find that a little strange. Honestly, I don't really understand it. Um, I would expect this to be expressed somehow as a single uh, as a single noun phrase, and yet you have mo here. Um, the, the best explanation I come up with is that Mo has a sense of not just an addition, but also like even. So even several hours, even some number of hours before, uh, and they have to line up. Okay, and then up here, this, this is actually quite tricky to explain. Honestly, I don't fully understand it. So yoni is, um, well, you, you mark a clause with yoni, and it has a sense of being the intended result of some other action. So here, people do this for the intended result of this so that they can, they, they line up at the school several hours before, so they can enter the school immediately once the gate opens. Um, grammatically, what's going on here is, well, yo, the yo in question here is a lot, there's a number of yo's. Um, it's this one, this one that uses the, the character for uh, sama, the honorific. Um, but it has a sense of like way of doing something, method of something, form, style, design, or, or peering and looking. So like in the way of something, in imitation of something, I guess maybe it's the, best translation. I don't know, I find it very, I've not seen a good translation of this word. It's really hard to nail down what this word means in itself. Anyway, in this form, uh, in, in other contexts, you'll see it used as a, as a, as a not adjective. And when you make a non adjective an adverb, you put ni in it. So this is like an adverbial form of your, of this, like in the style of, in the way of something and what way of what in this case? Well, we have this clause before it. So in the way of, in the style of this, people do this. Again, it's probably not a good translation because it's more like, well, people do this with the expected result of this is, is the, the real sense of it here. So the other interesting thing here is um, aitara, the, the, this is a form of aku, which is the intransitive verb meaning open. So the gates are opening. And the, the tara form has a sense of, it's usually translated as like if or when. So like if the gate opens or when the gate opens, then everyone can immediately enter. But I think a better translation would be upon, upon the gate opening. And I think that's a better translation because a key sense of the, the Tata form, a key part of it is that it is a, a sense of like a trigger of like this thing happens and then the thing that follows comes after in sequence or, or is immediately triggered in sequence by this thing happening. Whereas if and when, there are a lot of, of ways you would use if and when in English that wouldn't fit that criteria. So they would, they'd be a, a false translation in that case. So yeah, that's why I think it's better to translate this as upon the action. Okay, this one's pretty simple. We just have Disneyland, of course, with a suffix mitai, which has a sense of like resembling or something which is like. So Disneyland-like, and then taihen, so troublesome, challenging, and De here is actually not the particle day, like in this sentence down here, this, this next sentence. This day is actually the conjunctive form of the copula. So something is Disneyland-like, and then also something is troublesome. And at the end here, we have the end sentence particles, yone, which are just, just expressing an attitude about the statement, basically. So it's like, don't you know, and don't you agree, basically combined together. 
So the overall meaning here is that something is like Disneyland and is troublesome. And from context from the prior statement, you know she's talking about the, the, the school, people having to line up at the school to get in because it's so crowded. Now, you may be wondering, how do you tell apart the conjunctive form of the copula and the particle form of the copula? Honestly, I don't know. I'm not sure there really is a way. It's, it's really kind of disconcerting because in other cases, like we saw earlier with, with GOP in prior sentences, you know, there's the form, there's the GOP particle used to mark the subject, and then there's the GOP particle, the, the, the end sentence particle, or, or I should say conjunction, that's only used after the polite form of the verb or the polite form of the, of the copula. So in that case, you have a clear, immediate contextual clue about which got you've encountered. And so it, it's, it's not actually hard to discern them. It's, there's a pretty clear distinction. Whereas here, you know, the copula and the particle are both just preceded by some noun phrase. So here, I'm not sure how we know this is meant to be the copula form. Somehow the grammar parsing library that I use uh, did figure it out. That's why it's highlighted like the copula here instead of a particle but um, I'm not sure what clue it used. I don't really know how it figured that out. Anyway, that's something I don't have a great answer for. Okay, so this is saying um, from 2020, the year 2020, Corona de, meaning like in, in the bounds of Corona, in the time of Corona, uh, the sports festival as a topic, and then cancellation marked by ni, making it, well, like the target of the action. And what is the action here? Well, it's a form of uh, naru, meaning to become. So it became canceled. It became canceled is what this, what this is saying. And note here we have the, the tari form, which means we're inexhaustively list, listing actions that happen. And so the other thing that happens is that extremely small event as is the target of becoming again naru so it's, it became an extremely small event and then again in the pattern we use this tari form you list actions you end with a form of of suru so here is the past tense polite form of suru kotoshi kara mata iroiro na ibento ga hajimarimashita ga undou kai wa hotondo no shougakko de Okay, so this year, from this year, again, uh, various events, that is the subject, and then began, and after the polite form of a verb, we, we see ga. When you have ga immediately following the polite form of a verb or the copula, that tells you it's not the subject marker, it's it's a conjunction meaning like but or however it's one of many ways to say but or however in japanese and then sports festival as the topic uh, hotondo as an adverb means like mostly but here it means most so it's used as a, as a null modifier so most elementary schools at, at most uh, elementary schools uh corona no toki so time of corona to, this particle here is well it's the so-called quoting particle but here has a sense of like uh, if we're talking, if we're talking about the time of Corona, then what follows is uh, onaji yoni. So this is like, again, we saw yoni earlier, meaning like the the result, the the intended result of an action. But here it's more like same way, in the same way, uh, small event ni. So this is the target of action, which is becoming. So it became small event uh, in the same small in the same way. Uh, and then mitai this at the end. So after your verb adding mitai has a sense of like, well, I think it's the case. It, you know, it makes it more suppositional. So the whole thing is like, uh, from this year again, uh, various events began. However, uh, sports festivals um, at most elementary schools in the same way as the time of Corona seems like there'll be small events. So my children's elementary school also as well this year's sports festival as a topic uh, during the morning and dake is a particle meaning like only so only during the morning was 
So as for my children's elementary school, this year's sports festival was only in the morning. だからお弁当を作らなくてもよかったです。だから is, it means therefore.、Um, pretty obviously it's made out of、uh, だ the, the informal copula followed by から So like from that, from the thing just said is, is like the literal translation I would say. And, and then お弁当 So lunch is our direct object. And、um, make in negative te form. And that's followed by mo. And when you put a te form verb in front of mo, it has a sense of like even doing this. So even,、uh, even if not make lunch. And then what follows is the polite past tense of good. So was good. So the whole thing is、uh, therefore,、uh, even if not make lunch, it was fine that I didn't have to make lunch because, as, as said in the prior sentence, the event、uh, is only in the morning. それから、レジャーシートを持って行ってはいけないというルールがありました。So I'm going to actually start backwards here because it'll be easier. So、uh, here this part is saying that there's a, there's a rule that was. And here we have a relative clause construction. It's a noun preceded by a verb. And that's generally your clue that, ah, this is a relative clause construction. And so what is the verb? It's, it's say. Um, and what is being said? It's a rule that says, and what's being said is marked by the to particle. And so it's actually all of this is the, the, the clause marked by to. And so what this clause is saying is it's saying、um, uh, leisure sheet, again, which means like picnic blanket.、Uh, that's a direct object of motte, so, so hold, which is in the, the te iru form. And then the iru part of the te iru form is itself in the te form. Well, okay, so he, this construction here is you have te form of verb wa and then ike nai, which again is like the,、uh, it's iku in the potential negative form. So cannot go. So it has a sense of,、uh, we saw a similar construction earlier. It's a sense of like holding a, a picnic blanket, possessing a picnic blanket、uh, would not go. It's not something you should do. It's something you must not do. So it's saying、uh, there is a rule that says, That you can't hold, you can't bring a picnic blanket. And then, sore kara, that's literally just a sore is in like that, that thing, from that thing. It has a sense of,、uh, well, here it says, and then or after that. So it's just a, another connective phrase, basically. And then the next sentence Minna tatte mimas. So everyone stand and see with the overall sense of. Everyone stands to see. No one has picnic blankets. They're not sitting on the ground. Everyone's just standing to watch. Now, you might be wondering why mina is not marked by a particle. It's not、uh, the topic, it's not the subject. Well, I would say it's adverbial here. It's pretty much always the case if you, if you see a noun in a clause that's not marked by a particle, then, well, it, it must be adverbial. And that's very strange because in English, like, there's no equivalent in English where you could use everyone as an adverb like this. Like, like, you wouldn't say everyone l y stood and watched, right? <laughs> That'd be very strange and not, not valid English, right? But、uh, this is an aspect of Japanese, is they use adverbs in a, in a more expansive way than we do in English.、Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a strange construction from an English perspective, but you'll, you'll see、uh, other cases like this. Another interesting question here is well, is this actually technically two separate clauses or is it one clause? You have A verb in, in te form that links into another verb. Should we think of that as being two separate linked clauses or is it all just one clause? I'm, I'm not really sure how to think of this.、Uh, you see a lot of cases where a conjunctive form of the verb, the te form of the verb, immediately follows another verb. And in many cases, that forms sort of like、uh, the verb that follows is treated like an auxiliary. Like, say, if we look at the definition for, for miru here, you'll see、um, uh, that miru can be used as an auxiliary verb to have a sense of like, To try or to discover, to find something out. So, in another context, tate、um, mimas could mean even、uh, try to stand, is, is what it could mean in some other context. Though, obviously, in this context, it means they're standing to see. Anyway, so it's just another case in Japanese where, where things are generally more, more ambiguous, less, less specified, less nailed down, and, and more reliant upon context. だから
レジャーシートを置くために朝早くから並ぶ人もいなくなりました。Okay, so this is a therefore a leisure sheet, meaning picnic blanket, direct object of oku, meaning put, tame, meaning sake, so like for the sake,、uh, purpose of putting on a sheet, and then ni marks it as the target of action, the indirect object perhaps. And then early morning, from early morning,、uh, lining up people, people that line up early morning,、uh, marked by mo, and then inaku narimashita. So, narimashita, past tense of become. Inaku is the negative in- adverbial form of iru, meaning exist. And so, very literally, this is、uh, became not existently. And so, together, this has a sense of making something disappear to not exist anymore. So, the overall sense of this is that. Therefore,、um, people who show up early in the morning to put down blankets,、uh, they no longer exist. People aren't doing that anymore. Some of the choices of particle here are a little interesting, like the use of mo here to mark the people, that,、uh, the people lining up early in the morning. I think that makes sense because they, they no longer exist, and so mo might be more appropriate in that case. That's my, that's my hunch. And then use of ni on tame makes sense here because this is one way of expressing the idea of, of the, the main verb of the clause is done in, in order to do something else. In many cases, the, the secondary result of the action is, is marked by ni. Gozen chu da ke de hashit tari odot tari. Iro iro na koto o suru kara chotto isogashi desu ga. 私は運動会が午前中だけになって本当に嬉しいです。Morning, during morning, choose like a suffix meaning during within. So during morning, だけ meaning only, and then で as a particle marking it as the, the, the bounds of, of action, the bounds of time in this case. So only during the morning. And then we have that tari tari suru construction, so an inexhaustive list of, of things that are being done. So one is、uh, running, dancing, and then various things are also done. Koto、uh, is a general word meaning like thing. Well, it has a number of uses we'll, we'll encounter later, but one sense of it is just thing.、Uh, and then the whole clause here is marked by kara because it is an explanatory clause, it explains something else, it is the reason for something else. And what it explains is that we are somewhat busy. And again, we have the polite copula followed by ga, so it has a sense of being like、uh, however or but. So, however, I as the topic, and then what about me? Well, the sports festival is the subject,、uh, morning, only during morning, and that's the target, the result of becoming. So, become only during morning. The, sport, the sports festival became only during the morning. And then truly、um, happy, truly glad. And so the overall translation is that well, because we did、uh, only during the morning running, dancing, and various other things, then I, or perhaps we, were a bit busy. However, as for myself, I'm, I'm glad now, I'm happy now that the sports meet has become only during the morning. でもスポーツが大好きな子はもっと長い時間運動会をしたいかもしれませんね。So, でも at the beginning has a sense of but or however. Again, there are many ways to express that idea in Japanese. And then sports as subject, and then love or very much like child、uh, is our topic. This is confusing. I'll come back to this, but what this actually all means is that it's about kids who love sports, is what this is actually saying. So, that's our topic kids who love sports. And then more long time period. This is an adverbial time phrase. And then sports festival as an object of shtai. So this is actually a sort of the, the Thai form of sort of meaning、uh, want to do. So want to do sports festival. And then kamo marks this, this action, this wanting, as being something that's possible. And then here the verb,、uh, well, it could be the, the polite negative of the potential of shiris, of, of no. Or it could just be the intransitive of coolant of shiraru, so it could just be intransitively not knowing. Unfortunately, they're homonyms, so I'm not really sure which it's meant to be.、Um, both kind of make sense to me, really. Anyway, kamo, 
preceding uh, not know has a sense of like it saying that something may be the case. You don't know if something is the case or not, but it might be the case. And then again, ne is just in sentence particle, meaning like, uh, don't you think? So the overall meaning here is, uh, but however, children who love sports, um, more long time, uh, maybe, maybe they want, maybe it's the case that they want to do the sports festival for a more long time. That's the sense of this. Now, the really interesting thing here is that we have a child here called, um, marked by this clause. This, this, is a, this is a relative clause construction. It's a clause preceding a noun. Very literally, this is like, sports is loved children. Children for whom sports is loved is the very literal translation here. Un unfortunately, there's a grammatical ambiguity here where you can interpret this alternatively as just being a, a so-called not adjective, like um, daisuki is a not adjective, so daisuki no ko. So it could, be, it could mean a favored child, a loved child. And so very strangely then, this would be saying sports is a loved child, which obviously is a strange idea to express, and so not what's intended here. But grammatically, as far as I know, that's equally just as valid an interpretation here. Okay, now we have a very short sentence, so I'll just lump it with the following longer sentence. Okay, so this is just saying literally something is difficult. What, what is difficult? Well, presumably it's what you just mentioned. It's the fact that um, children who love sports maybe want to have a longer sports day. And, and so perhaps accommodating that is a difficult situation. Anyway, so the next sentence then is autumn as our topic, uh, school event as a subject, very or, or, or many exist. So, so many school events exist in autumn. Node here is a way of marking the clause as being an explanation. It's another way of marking something as an explanation. Why, why you would use this and not kara here or, or other alternatives, I, I, I don't really know. But this is one way of expressing causality. And then the follow-up is again, other event stories also uh, want to do, as in like want to tell stories about other events. And then the whole thing is marked by the quoting particle to because it is, well, here this means think, so that it is the thing that is thought, the thing that she thinks. So the whole sentence is saying that uh, as for autumn, in autumn, uh, there are many school events and therefore she thinks that uh, she wants to again tell stories about other events. Finally, last sentence. では、今日はこれで終わりにしましょう。また来週。First off, では is a, is a particle, it's a combo particle of で and は and we saw it used earlier marking a noun phrase. Here there's no noun phrase preceding it, so it's really more of a, it's just an interjection here, and it has a sense of like, uh, well then. So, well then, uh, today, that's our topic. Kore de, so like, you know, in a very abstract way, with this. And then, awari, end, marked by ni. So it's the target of our action, which is to to do. So this is the polite form of suru, but the, the sho at the end makes this like uh, volitional. So, so very literally, like, let us do to the end. So the whole thing means, uh, well then, to, as for today, uh, with that, let's end it here. Let, let's end it. And then the very last sentence, the sign-off says, again, next week, as in like, I'll see you next week, we'll do this again next week.